What's up everybody? It's Rob here from the Basement Bike Shop and in this video I'm going to show you how to install a BMX U-brake. This is going to show you how to take it from completely brakeless to having brakes. Now in one of my other videos I showed you how to install the Odyssey Springfield brake which is very different from most U-brakes because of the way the spring works. So this video is going to show you how to adjust most of your normal coil spring U-brakes. So the first thing you're going to need is your brake mount kit consisting of your U-brake posts and your cable guides. I'm going to start off by flipping the bike upside down and elevating it just so I can access the areas on the frame that I need to easier. Then I'm going to screw in my U-brake post or my U-brake mount. Some of them aren't thread in like the ones in my Odyssey Springfield install video. Then we're going to tighten them down with a wrench. Now if yours does not have a spot to lock a wrench on the outside, a lot of times what you do is you insert an Allen wrench on the inside and tighten it down. Then we're going to install our two cable guides. One that the housing goes through. And the other one where the housing will stop and there's a barrel adjuster. Yours might only have one cable guide. Um, it's just depends on the frame, I guess. And then we'll put our barrel adjuster in. And then we'll mount our brakes and our lever. So we'll do the brakes first. It doesn't really matter which one you do first. Now you can clearly see that one goes over the other one. So I'm going to slide on the one that goes underneath first. And then slide on the one that goes on top. Now the one that goes on top usually has the writing on it or the logo. And then we're going to screw in the screws that go into our U-brake posts. Next we're going to set our brake pads. Now I like to do this before I put tension on the spring. It allows me to push it all the way against the rim. Then I loosen the back bolt. I push it flat against the rim and then I tighten it back up while holding the brake pad with my hand. Now if holding the brake pad with the hand is too hard, you can always take an adjustable wrench like I do in my Springfield video and lock it on the brake pad and then tighten the back bolt. Then after that, to tension the spring, we're going to take our wrench which in our case is a 17 millimeter and twist it so that it, the spring pulls the brake pad away from the rim. Now we can twist it a little more to put a little more tension on it, a little less to put a little less. Just remember that the more tension you put on the spring, the harder the pull is going to be at the lever. Then we're going to tighten it down. And then we're going to try to put about the same amount of tension on the other side. Now we're going to micro adjust this later after we get the straddle cable on. Next I'm going to mount the brake lever. Now my lever has a hinge so I don't have to take my grip off. If you have a lever that does not have a hinge you can check out my easy removal and installation of grips video. There'll be a link on the screen now or there will be a link in the description. Then adjust the lever to where you want. Tighten it down. And then we're going to install the cable and the straddle cable. Now it doesn't matter which one of those you install first either. 
we're going to do the cable first. So the first thing you're going to do is unwind your cable and then you're going to separate the inner cable from the housing. And then we're going to cut the housing to length by dry fitting it into the bike. So we'll slide it into the lever. And then past our barrel adjuster to see how much cable we actually want sticking out the front. Then I'm going to mark that with my fingers and use my cable cutters to cut the housing. And put a ferrule on the other side, which I usually end up taking off. I don't know why I put it on so soon. I'm going to put my cable strap on the front here just to make sure that it all looks good. If you don't have a cable strap you can use a big black zip tie. That's what I usually use. Um, works really good. And then we're going to feed our inner cable in. Now I usually take the back of the housing out of the barrel adjuster too as I feed this in. And then once it pops through the other side, I'll put my ferrule back on the other side. And then put it back in the barrel adjuster. And then to put it back into the lever, we're going to line up all the slots in the lever barrel adjuster. Pop the end into our lever and then slide the cable through those slots. And then push it all the way through. Next, we're going to mount the straddle cable and then connect it all up. So sometimes you have to tighten one side down. You'll hook one side in and the other side you'll actually adjust the cable and tighten it down. Um, with mine it's got two ends on it, especially made for this break in frame so I can just hook both ends in and then feed the cable through the center. Now how I do this is I turn all my barrels in all the way and then I tighten it to where my brake pads are just a couple millimeters off my rim and then I can always adjust it from there. After you get this tightened down, you'll adjust your bill adjuster to where you like how much pull your lever has and then clip the excess cable. Now for the adjustment part of it, I'm going to pull the lever a couple times and watch which arm moves more than the other. Now the arm of the brake that moves less, I'm going to put a little more tension on that side of the spring by loosening the top bolt, twisting a little more tension into the spring with the wrench and then using the Allen wrench to tighten it back down. Until you feel like each brake pad pulls away from the rim the same amount. After that, we'll tighten down the jam nuts on our barrel adjusters. For some reason I lost my 8mm so I'm using this adjustable wrench. And that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button and I'll keep these videos coming. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, you can leave a comment below or you can send me an email. Thanks again.